Hello and welcome. I'm Gohar Raza and you are watching Eureka, a program that brings you face to face with an outstanding scientist. Welcome Dr. Sarangi to Rajya Sabha channel. We are very thankful that you have given us time. You were directly recruited into uh, Uranium Corporation of India. As a geologist, did you feel comfortable working with physicists because it is the area of physicists, not of geologists? Yes. Uh, it was in fact the Baba's dream to make India indigenously uh, sufficient uh, with uh, nuclear generation capacity. It is with this aim that he first emphasized that India must have indigenous resources of uranium. And that is how Uranium Corporation of India was set up to produce uranium, mining and processing of uranium in the country. And I'm being a part of that, I feel absolutely not at all uncomfortable with uh, working with uh, physicists or engineers or for that matter with anybody. In fact, I enjoyed uh, working with uh, all these great personalities and with this great setup. Do you feel related to people like uh, Dr. Bhaba, Dr. Setna, those, those icons of that time, do you still get inspired by them? Yes, uh, I, I get inspired by the people, those who directly worked under him like uh, Dr. Chidambaram, uh, Dr. Kakotkar, Dr. Banerjee, the present chairman, Dr. R.K. Sinha. They were wonderful personalities and wonderful scientists, wonderful leaders. Let's go back to memory lane. Uh, did you ever think when you were a part of a family where father was a doctor uh, that you will uh, be working with atomic energy? Uh, I, I had the name of Dr. Baba, but I had never thought that I will have the opportunity to work in a family of Dr. Baba uh, so intensely. Uh, in fact, I took up science, uh, in fact, uh, after, uh, after my intermediate in science, I took up physics. Who uh, inspired you to take up science? Your father? Uh, my father was a motivational force, obviously, definitely was a motivational force. And some of my teachers, uh, I had outstanding teachers, professors at different periods. Do you remember of them? Yes, I do remember them. And uh, they, they contributed immensely to shape my future uh, towards science. So, as I said, I was first taking up uh, physics. Um, uh, then uh, the class was very big when we took a BSc honors uh, in Ravenshire College, present it is Ravenshire University in Odisha. Uh, but my friends, uh, those who were studying geology, they were talking very good about, very great about the subject in geology. So one day I decided that I must attend one of their classes. Right. I attended that and I attended that class was on solar system, earth system, minerals, rocks and I really got impressed, uh, more impressed with the um, oratory skill of the professor. Uh, then I never went back, looked back and uh, went ahead with geology. And, uh, a good <laughs> professor, one lecture can change <laughs> the destiny of a student. So then onwards you never looked back. I never looked back. Who uh, told you about an atomic energy that you can uh, get a job here? You uh, never thought of going abroad? Uh, I, I never thought of going abroad in fact. Uh, because I thought probably if I work for the country then I'll have a lot of opportunities to go abroad. There is not a problem at all which I could manage. Uh, but then working with the country and working with the atomic energy gave me immense satisfaction. When I first got the opportunity to work in this department, I immediately joined uh, because it had earned a name by itself. Uh, being It has great achievers. Uh, it had already achieved many things in uh, Indian science and uh, Dr. Bhava's name is associated with this. So that influenced me to take a quick decision and join Department of Atomic Energy. And there was no resistance uh, from the family? Uh, there was no resistance from the family. But it's a very dangerous area <laughs> that you are entering. Nuclear technology is not, not safe. All those fears related to nuclear technology? Uh, nothing, nothing, nothing. Your father was very comfortable. Very Your comfortable. mother was very comfortable. Very comfortable. Then nothing right. will happen to you if you work in this area. Right, right. They encouraged you? It was celebrated when you got selected? Uh, yes, it got selected. Uh, 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 celebration on both ways. First, I got the job. And, we, uh, and then it is Department of Atomic Energy, which has a name by itself. Uh, then for the last 32 years, I am there in this company and this setup. It's a long time. You have grown with uh, UCIEL. Uh, don't go anywhere. I have to take a break. The discussion will continue. We'll come back soon. Welcome back. 
डॉक्टर अक्षय कुमार सारंगी यू हैव क्रोन अलोंग विद दिस इंस्टॉलेशन अ ग्रेट इंस्टॉलेशन इन फैक्ट व्हिच इज सर्विंग द कंट्री डिड यू एवर फील अनसेफ working there as a geologist not at all it's it's a very very safe installation very very uh, in fact i am working in a mine uh, a lot of mines have been developed after my joining in the things there is absolutely no problem working in this set of uh, see when uh, the blueprint was being laid we knew even at that time that we do not have sufficient uranium and whatever uranium we have it is of Uh, not very good quality it's of very very inferior quality as compared to what other countries have yet we have gone ahead with searching uranium frantically during the past at least 50 years if not 60 years what do you see as future of mining uranium in the country because we have a little bit of it in uh, jharkhand नॉर्थ ईस्ट मे सप्लाई सम कर्नाटका अ लिटल बिट गुड यूरेनियम प्रॉब्ली इन कर्नाटका बट वेरी लिटल एंड देन यू हैव आंध्र प्रदेश इट इज नॉट सफिशेंट टू सस्टेन न्यूक्लियर पावर विद इन द कंट्री वॉट इज द फ्यूचर इट हेज टू बी सेन इन टू वेज फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी आर ऑलमोस्ट कन्विंस दैट इंडिया डजेंट हैव लार्ज रिसोर्सेज ऑफ यूरेनियम बट वी हैव लार्ज रिसोर्सेज ऑफ थोरियम Correct. and with this unique uh, arrangement of uh, atomic mineral resources in our country uh, dr baba had visualized that and had uh, dreamed for unique three stage nuclear power program which may be knowing three stage three stage nuclear power program in the first stage we will use whatever uranium we have uh, then uh, in the second stage and this uranium uh, that uh, first stage uranium will produce power and the second stage that plutonium that comes out of reprocessing of uranium will be used in the second stage when we use fast breeder uh, fast breeder reactors, reactors right. which is under construction now and thorium used in that second stage reactors will bring will produce uranium 233 which will be used as a fuel in third stage of reactors and in third stage reactors more of thorium will be used to produce uranium 233 will also be used as a fuel this is a, this is a very unique uh, uh, i mean unique arrangement of uh, um, taking the maximum Um, out of uh, whatever potential of uranium have. whatever you have and also making the most use of thorium large resource of thorium and that is how we will able to attain uh, nuclear uh, security for our country and uh, so that is the reason why whatever uranium have we must make sure that we are maximizing this its production and maximizing its utilities that is how we see our, our role in this country but less than 50% of nuclear power plants that are running in the country can use the available uranium at the moment you are trying very hard ucil is trying very hard to to meet the demand but the gap is too large the demand and the supply gap we are trying to fill it up with imported uranium from russia now australia also is entering into business with us but mainly the old russian states don't you think that security cannot be achieved unless we implement the plan that was laid by baba which is going to take a lot of time yes you are absolutely right uh, this imported uranium that we are getting now those are come with some riders this those uranium cannot be used uh, in the three stage nuclear power program and uh, that is quite clear so this uranium will be used in the reactors which will act as additionalities to our program of three stage power program uh, that as i said initially that the more and more uranium that we produce will have a bigger platform in the first stage uh, which will enable us to explore the pot- uh, to exploit the potential of the large resources of thorium we must go ahead with the three stage nuclear power program that has been visualized by dr baba about 50 years back but if there is a geopolitical crisis today in the world which can happen at any point of time then don't you think that our program will be completely destabilized because 50% of our power reactors especially the uh, nuclear power reactors are dependent on the foreign fuel 
we face this crisis in 2000 we faced the crisis we also face uh, very recently into 2014 uh, there was a problem of supply so don't you think that we we are slightly insecure at the moment uh, in fact, uh, as I understand correctly, this uh, Indian uh, nuclear agreement that has, uh, that has been put into practice now, that has sufficiently addressed these issues. Um, uh, but that is one aspect. And at the same time, we are pursuing our efforts to produce more and more uh, indigenous uranium. <coughs> How safe is mining within the country? Especially in Jadugoda, which has been in news for wrong reasons, or the latest technology that is being used to mine uranium in Andhra Pradesh. How safe are those mining projects? Uranium mining is absolutely safe and it is safer than mining any other products, any other minerals in this country. That is absolutely no doubt about that. In fact, this wrong regions that you talked about, uranium mining, it is because of the two things. First of all, it is mining. Uh, mining the mining industry as such, in spite of its their best of best, uh, contribution to the society uh, for the legacy issues they are on the wrong side uh, people don't see mining as a contributor to the national growth even if they contribute largely and secondly uranium mining, mining nothing, can, nothing happen. can happen and secondly uranium mining is a part of a nuclear industry which again as you rightly said that it is being seen as a part of uh, uranium and uranium is introduced to the mankind in a very wrong way so these are the two regions basically two regions for which uranium mining is in the uh, wrong people's, uh, I mean, uh, that people, those who are not aware of uh, scientific facts or things, they see this uh, um, as detrimental to health and other things, detrimental to the environment, which is absolutely not correct. You can see me, I'm, for the last 32 years, I'm working in this industry. <laughs> and in inside fact, the mine <laughs> inside all the, the time. And, and in, you fact, are uh, in, right. in fact, the place where I'm working, people for third generation, people are also working in the same mine. So there is absolutely no reason for me to be, uh, be scared of. There have been news that the incidents of, of uh, health problems have risen in, in the area of Jadu Goda especially. Uh, uh, you, you refute them completely because you have conducted uh, surveys in that area as well. Uh, a large number of surveys have been conducted. Large number of reports are available on uh, websites in public domain. And uh, we strongly refute those charges. And we have been refuting the charges in different platforms, different forums. I would like to ask you, what is special? Because we were late entrant. We, we are the 13th nation as far as nuclear power is concerned. Uh, what is special about our mining system? How are we different? And what kind of latest technology that we are using and indigenous technology? that we are using for mining? Uh, first of all, our mining, uh, as you rightly said from the beginning, that it's a low-grade resources. And this, this, these uh, deposits are small in size, they are narrow width, and grade is also low. So we cannot go for massive production like what other people are doing. Our mines will, will be able to produce only small quantity of uranium, um, of course, with a low grade. So the technology that we apply um, has to be safe enough uh, to handle uranium, to produce uranium to our need. So whatever the development that has taken place in the world, uh, especially in case of mining, underground mining, in fact, we are uh, working in six out, of, uh, six out of seven mines that we are operating are underground. Uh, whatever technology that we have followed, uh, they are best comparable to anywhere in the world. In fact, we are, our technology uh, assimilates the skill available in our place, as well as uh, we have gone for appropriate level of mechanization. Uh, to meet our needs. I'll have to take a break. Don't go anywhere. We'll come back soon. Welcome back. Dr. Sarangi, we were discussing that Indian experience of nuclear technology has been a unique experience, including the mining of uranium. Uh, when we were developing uh, this, when we took as a nation this decision that we will go for nuclear power for peaceful purposes, at that time, the international community did not support us. We had to develop things right from scratch. And I have uh, Dr. Seth now on record that most of the scientists who were initially recruited didn't know much about 
the material, the technology, and we did it. When we are talking about mining part of, of uh, this whole exercise, we are mining uranium and thorium both. Thorium deposits are, as you said, in large quantities. This uranium is low grade, so every single drop of uranium, the yellow cake that we get out of it is extremely important for the country. How is it that we are going to ensure that we take maximum out of whatever we have? When we discover the deposit, we try to do some techno-economic studies, techno-feasibility studies. Uh, then we prepare the mining plan. Which is your area of specialization, uh, exactly, in fact. Exactly. And we prepare the mining plan in such a way that we will be able to extract maximum out of that. And same is the processing technology. The technology that we adopt, that we have developed over a period of time with our experience, with our research and development in our own set of, takes care of uh, facts that minimum amount of uranium is lost in the process. We try to get maximum out of that. And How do you ensure that technically? I would like to understand a little bit. Uh, it is, uh, you can compare with the uh, recovery of uranium that comes out uh, is almost equivalent to, or if not uh, better than what other people do in other countries. For example, uh, United States of America or Australia or they are all very Kazakhstan. Uh, uh, Kazakhstan is a different story. Kazakhstan, they adopt in-situ leaching method of mining, which is again unique. That's a very unique method of mining. Um, they don't do mining. It is neither underground nor open cast. It's a different kind of method and it is applicable only to a particular geological setup. Such setups are not available in that. If you go for uh, our type of ore body, our grade of ore body, uh, open pit and non-ground, conventional type of mining, then uh, on the recovery factor, uh, we stand probably at the top of the world. At the, at the top of the world, oh, yes. you would say it with yes. confidence yes. and with responsibility. Yes. And this uh, excellence has been achieved from within. We didn't get much of support from outside. Now, if we look at this scenario today, you are talking of uh, sustainable mining of uranium in particular. What should one understand by sustainable mining of uranium? Uh, the sustainability, I mean, I will not go by definition. Uh, it uh, calls for the progresses um, to meet the need of the present generation. And at the same time, you live for the future generation also to survive. Uh, they should not struggle for the work that we do today. Uh, in, under this context, under this philosophy, uh, a mining industry finds difficult uh, to make an impact because it's an extractive industry. The mine, uh, if once the ore or mineral is mined, it is lost. Uh, and it's not available for the future generation and the things. So they have to have some other ways, uh, that is the leaving some social or environmental footprints uh, for the future generations for, to strive. But if you talk to uranium mining on this regard, it's a bit different. Its position is uh, a little different, a little positive. First of all, uh, uranium is a very concentrated source of energy uh, and it is used in production of uh, electricity from nuclear power, which is, uh, which is considered as a clean electricity compared to the environmental constraints, environmental damage done by uh, electricity generated from thermal power. Through Correct. thermal power. Uh, secondly, uh, that uh, uh, it is, it, I mean, that... Uh, but it, when it, it contaminates, in, like uh, Fukushima, it contaminates <laughs> for, for <laughs> no, centuries it, to come. No, 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 it's not like that. Uh, then it, it uh, helps uh, the earth in protecting itself right. from the irreversible environmental damage caused by other sources, especially the fossil fuels. Then in addition to that, in uranium in our country, as I said, in the use of three-stage nuclear program, power program, uh, the more of uranium that we use, it just gives us the confidence and gives us a bigger platform uh, to ma max make maximum use of thorium, uh, thereby attaining the uh, energy security for the future. So that is how uranium has, uh, the process of mining uranium, process of producing uranium uh, is a sustainable compliant process, sustainable development compliant process. And for that this you were awarded? The national yes, award. Yes, and, yes. And so my, yes, my recognition is more towards 
uh, capacity building in the selenium production sector, uh, the institutional growth of the sector, that is how it has been awarded in that. How did you celebrate when you were awarded? <laughs> well, it's a, uh, I received this news when I was in a meeting with uh, industry experts, industry leaders. Uh, when I received this message, in fact, there was uh, jubilation from everybody because the uranium industry is a very small industry, very strategic industry and a very focused industry. Normally, we do not uh, advertise much on of our activities, other things, but somehow it has been uh, it noticed uh, by the uh, policy makers and that is how this award has come and it's a celebration for the whole industry. See, you mentioned that you have worked with people like great scientists like uh, Dr. Kakotkar and uh, Dr. Chidamram. I find that the environment, the hope and the culture that has been created by people like Dr. Baba, Dr. Setna, Dr. M. G. K. Menon, and later on by the second generation, has been a unique experience in the country. Has that been an inspiring force behind the, the work and seriousness that all uh, atomic energy installations have? Have you experienced that culture and you think that you are a part of that, you are product of that uh, culture? Uh, yes, uh, I am very fortunate to be a part of that culture. In fact, uh, what was unique about Dr. Kagodkar and, and uh, <laughs> Dr. Chidambaram that you remember? Uh, uh, yes, they're great personalities and uh, they're great team leaders. They'll encourage you to get the maximum out of you and they're ready to take the responsibility in case there are disappointments. Uh, and that is how. And that is the culture across that the is board. The culture, the, in, yes, uh, exactly. Atomic energy. Yes, and the uranium industry that, uh, that we are seeing today, uh, that is because of, in fact, I must compliment the uh, efforts made by my seniors. Uh, those who took this uranium industry to such a platform, a big platform, where and allowed us youngsters like us to dream and uh, set some target and achieve certain things. Very good, wonderful. You have paid your homage to the uh, previous generation, your seniors. Do you have a message for younger generation? Uh, I I meet very often uh, my colleagues. Of course, I tell always tell them that. Uh, uh, see, the position that you are working today in the, in the organizations or in the system, uh, you have contributed at the same time, uh, there is a lot of contribution from the society or from the nation that you must accept that, you must admit that. And uh, you must avail the opportunities that are, available, that are present before you today to pay back to the nation in some form or other, at least more than what you have received in this. And also, I, I, uh, I uh, go to some different colleges, institutions for uh, imparting lectures, attending other things. No? I always tell the students uh, that when you, when you go out of these colleges and you finish your education, uh, you look for sectors, not only those who pay good packages, compensation packages and things, but you must see the sectors which provide big challenges, challenging responsibilities. Uh, and I must tell you that uh, Indian nuclear sector, Indian uranium sector, they are known for some such prospects. Look for big challenges, not only for big pay packets. That is the message we take back home today. If you have any questions, queries or comments, Dr. Sarangi will be very happy to answer them. Okay. Write to us, our email address is eurekarstv at gmail.com. Thank you very much Thank you. for giving us Thank so you. much of time and Thank coming you. to Rajya Sabha channel. Thank you.